Vortex Energy Part 4 Medicine Wheels and Obelisks here we will just touch the surface um, on these two subjects but there will be more to explain in the future it is the sensitivity of all creation to all creation which is the only path of true progress the sensitive dowser wishing to locate the position and design of a device with the intention of bringing peace and harmony to an area cannot escape the singular responsibility of being right there is no room for apologies the simple rule of do it right do it once and it stands forever always applies through all the ages the sensitive has been a major contribution to bringing tranquility and peace but never by the use of suggested authority or assumed superiority what often is found upon research is that the concerned sensitive is a very aware or humble person yet one who displays confidence in most facets of his life the dowser the shaman are all common names used over the years as titles for the sensitive who sees the assumedly hidden answers for short and long-term problems there has to be a crossover from the factual philosophy to the actual physical the relationship of small electromagnetic fields to actual events has been well illustrated and must always be kept in sharp focus all things are the manifestation of thoughts how much whether good or bad is not the question for such a series of questions could be debated forever and seemingly never be resolved the dowser seeks to find ley lines which to the earth as a sphere are the neurological system to the human being the sensitive looks for the location of interrelated lines of stress or disease in the case of the human a light touch a small rub perhaps even a deep local massage will bring about the relief of pain when we relate to the world dance by a small group or a big tribe can be used to locally adjust conditions from this we can now grasp the significance of the North American rain dance and its local effects most Indian dances were used to directly influence physical local and distant conditions much like Saqqara in Egypt and the Temple of Beauty where dancers were taught to use their mind and body so as to heighten the participants and audiences spiritual awareness bearing in mind that thoughts are things the creation of tranquil beauty brought about a gentle social awareness music soothes the savage heart so we are reminded by the old saying but it can also arouse anger and a level of self-indulgence where the hedonistic attitude predominates while we have considered dance as an influence on a local scale dance performed at a conjunction of ley lines which are strong reaches out and magnifies the intent of the dancers where there is a conjunction of ley lines which are hurting or sore then a dance of pounding feet is the very last thing the location needs this would be the same condition that a person with a toothache would respond to a punch in the jaw the concerned dowser sees and knows how to relate to the earth's needs simply by observation or if you will talking to it each ley line has its own individual nature which is expressed in its direction of pulse flow the frequency of its pulse the line of relaxation between pulse the width of this pulse the length of the line and finally the heading of the line at the intersecting site not all lines are consistently straight or consistently deep in fact consistency between any two lines is seldom the case the dowser of old and modern times sees only what the earth has to show in the way of ley lines subterranean watercourses mineral deposits and other conditions the dowser of the earth has a direct counterpart in the diagnostic doctor of modern medicine with all of his sophisticated instrumentation the sensitive was the first person who responded to the soft gentle signals originating from all creation the evolution of humanity has wandered away from its own feelings and substituted instruments for personal feelings the reason for this swing is that we humans as a species tend to be inclined to induce deception rather than trust 
the desire of all creation to be in a state of happiness or inertia, that is to say, to keep doing what one is doing, is a common event. Thus, the old dowsers located sites where aggression would not be encountered. On such sites, the location would be marked by a simple structure, such as a rock or rocks being placed together, or the placing of a pole. As human intelligence evolved, more elaborate site marking was used. Most modern society members consider architectural form to be totally insignificant, yet contemporary churches will incorporate steeples, towers, domes and raised dais. Church sites are selected more often due to land cost, but oddly dowsing surveying often shows healthy congregations are located on healthy ley line sites. In the beginning, simple poles were stuck in the ground to mark sacred places. Baton Rouge received its name because the Indians marked it with a red pole. Sometimes these poles became obelisks. There are two types of obelisks. One designed for a downshoot and the other for an upshoot. Downshoot obelisks are placed over spots where the energy is going into the ground. A typical heavy, heavyweight cast stone obelisk would usually weigh above 800 pounds and sometimes run into the thousands of tons and are always built on vortex down shoots. The device is constructed to ensure that the required weight is concentrated on this site, often concealed as a memorial device. A lightweight obelisk is generally made from wood and would weigh less than 800 pounds and is always built on a vortex upshoot. This structure is hollow and may Im incorporate voice ports which are covered with filter glass, i.e. blue, yellow, green and red. Careful review of old Indian wheels and mound sites indicates that there is a consistency between sites scattered over not only a continental area but across the world. This view totally dismisses such building of mounds, barrows or pyramids as a singular local event. A case in point being that the majority of earth mounds are located on raised headlands with a view over water or a valley river system. The predominant orientation is with a view towards the east or southeast and wherever possible the incorporation of a southerly aspect stretching from sunrise to sunset. Today such an exposure would be sought by people who have an aesthetic love of nature. Beauty is a need of such a person, where all of the senses are in harmonic balance in such an environment, human tranquility can return to the beholder. Some mounds are quite small, others contain large volumes of earth and rock. Silbury Hill and Avebury Temple are two fine examples which are located in southwest England. It is in this area that the world famous wood and stone circles are also located. Avebury with Woodhenge and of course Stonehenge both sadly decimated in much the same manner as hundreds of sites all over the world. Thousands of visitors who lack just basic respect for the environment, coupled by misguided groups who claim spiritual awareness related to a particular site. Often such a claim is founded simply to satisfy the personal egos of the group's participants. Each and every site should be respected if for no other reason than the desire to create a spot where selfish interest is not acceptable. A simple marker such as the stone wheel proclaims to all that see it that the site has an unusual nature. For all who understand the significance of such a device, all selfish thoughts, words and deeds are cast aside. The correctly placed wheel properly designed will radiate the subtle earth energy for the betterment of all creation. Medicine or in modern terms energy wheels do not produce power to light lamps or new electrical motors, nor should the owner expect to vastly improve crops within a planting to harvest season. Medicine wheels do not produce the typical overnight cure for all ills. The progress is consistent and seemingly slow, but at all times it is progress. Progress in every way towards being at peace with the total environment.